Hello everyone, Mark Milwee again, uh, Trinity, Alabama, uh, Mount View Baptist Church. Uh, we are uh, continuing our series on the personal spiritual life uh, today. And today I want to uh, talk about a subject that's very uh, uh, dear to my heart. It's uh, reading your Bible or Bible reading. Um, a lot of uh, Christians uh, miss out on the most of, uh, practices when they don't read their Bible. And so... Uh, if you really want to grow in your spiritual life, you got to read and be familiar with the Bible. But I came across this. I thought you might enjoy it as we get started. It says, you may not be reading your Bible enough if you open your Bible in church and a huge dust cloud uh, comes out. <laughs> uh, or you might not be reading your Bible enough if you think Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, had a few hit songs back in the 60s. Uh, you open your uh, Bible to the Gospel of Luke, and a savings bond falls out. Uh, you might not be reading your Bible enough if you think that Hercules was one of the patriarchs. Uh, you might not be reading your Bible enough if you can't find Charleston Heston in the concordance or the table of contents. Uh, you might not be reading your Bible enough if you catch your kids reading from the Song of Solomon, and you demand... Who gave you this? <laughs> uh, you might not be reading your Bible enough if you keep falling for it every time the pastor says, turn to Second Hezekiah. Well, I thought you might uh, like those as, as we get started uh, today. Uh, let, let me talk about the importance of reading your Bible. Um, Donald Whitney, in his book, Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life, says, no spiritual discipline is more important than the intake of God's Word. Nothing can substitute for it. There is simply no healthy Christian life apart from a diet of milk and meat of Scripture. Now, let me read that one more time, and then we'll talk about it. No spiritual discipline is more important than the intake of God's Word, than the reading of God's Word. Nothing can substitute for it. There is simply no healthy Christian life apart from a diet of milk and meat of Scripture. So why is reading the Bible so important for your spiritual life? I know there's lots of good uh, Christian material out there. I, I showed you some really good devotionals yesterday and, and, and all that. But there's nothing that substitutes for reading God's Word. We've got to spend time in God's Word if we want to grow in Christ. In fact, uh, this is kind of one of my soapbox issues. I mean, Christians are not reading their Bibles. And we've got to read our Bible if we want to grow in our walk uh, with the Lord. Uh, USA Today reported a poll that showed that only 11% of Americans, Christian and non-Christian, 11%, read their Bible every day. More than half uh, read it less than once a month. According to the Barner Research Group, among those claiming to be born again, only 18%, less than two of every 10, read the Bible every day. And worst of all, 23%, almost one in four professing Christians, say they never read their Bible. Furthermore, only one in five ever read the Bible all the way through in their entire lifetime. How can you grow if you don't eat? God has given us his word to nourish us and to strengthen us and to help us. And there's no substitute for... Here, listen. I I've said this often. If you spent the time that it takes just to watch one sitcom, if you just substituted that time and read your Bible, you could easily read your Bible all the way through uh, within a year. And so I just want to challenge you. Uh, Tyndall House Publishers, of course, they publish a lot of Bibles, but they report this. 85% of those who read the Bible more than once per week are extremely satisfied with their spiritual life. In addition, 81% said they feel content, 87% said they are at peace, and 92% agreed that their life has clear meaning, focus, and purpose if they will read uh, their Bible. You've you got to get into the Word so the Word can get into you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
So get me, let me give you some practical suggestions uh, for success in reading your Bible. Uh, number one, uh, just like we said with the quiet time, you got to make time for it. I mean, it's part of my quiet time uh, every day to, to read my Bible, and, and uh, that's what you need to be doing, and I would strongly encourage you uh, to do that. But you also have to get a plan. I want to show you the plan that I use that I enjoy. Um, this is the plan uh, from uh, Discipleship Journal, a Bible reading plan. Uh, you can go to uh, discipleshipjournal.com and you can order one of these. Uh, and here's why I like this one. This particular plan, it gives you uh, four readings for each day. I don't know if you can see that, but it gives you four readings for each day. It gives a reading from the Gospels, from the New Testament, from the wisdom literature, and then also from the Old Testament. What happens with a lot of folks is they get started, you know, they're, they're going, I want to read my Bible all the way through. And they start in Genesis, and they get over to about Deuteronomy, and they get bogged down, and, and they give up, and they quit. But a good reading plan like this one gives you variety in your reading every day. I also like it because it gives you 25 readings per month. And uh, that gives you some built-in days because uh, everybody gets behind. Everybody misses a day and, and that sort of thing. So they understand that and they give you some catch-up days. And so uh, uh, Discipleship Journal Bible Reading Plan, I've used it for years. I highly recommend it. In fact, most uh, Bibles now, new Bibles, have a reading plan in the back. And so, uh, you know, one final thing about this is if you'll read it, it's got a little box. You just check off the boxes. So, you know, if you just check off what you read each day, then, uh, you know, you can read it in a year. You can read it in two years. You can read it five years. But if you check off what you've read, then you know what you've read. And so uh, that's why a Bible reading plan is good. And it helps you, so find the time, find the plan. And then when you read, I, I strongly suggest before you start reading that you um, pray every day and say, Lord, as I read your word today, show me what you want me to know. Show me what you want to teach me today. Uh, and keep a pencil or a highlighter handy and, and underline those passages that really jump out at you. And, and then meditate, which just means think about it. Think about that passage that's jumped out at you. What's God trying to say to me uh, through this passage today? So let, let me give you some resources that are found in the Bible that are found no, nowhere else. Uh, number one, the Bible contains God's standard of truth. Psalm 119, uh, verse 89 to 91 says, Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day for all things uh, serve you. So God uh, gives us his standard of truth uh, in his word. You can't find it uh, anywhere else. And, and that's one of the other reasons why you need to be reading it. Uh, number two, uh, the Bible is a guidebook for life. I like to call it the owner's manual for living. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, uh, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. So it's our owner's manual. Uh, we need to study it. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that little acrostic for, for Bible. B-I-B-L-E. Basic Information before leaving earth. I, I kind of like that. All right, it's our uh, owner's manual for life. Uh, number three, the Bible comforts, teaches, and encourages us. And I think we all need a little comfort and encouragement right now. Romans 15 verse 4 says, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of scriptures, we might have hope. I've shared this often. As a pastor now for over 30 years, I've often been by the bedside of folks who are nearing the end of their life. And often, during those times, people want to hear from God's Word. They don't ask me to pull out a book of poetry or to their favorite novel. They want to hear words of comfort from God's Word. 
God's Word gives us strength and comfort during the most difficult times of life. And we need to read it each and every day. Well, number four, uh, the Bible cautions us about the mistakes of others. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, that, that, that first section of that chapter talks about this. But let me just read two verses. It says, These things uh, happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. The Bible shows us the consequences of sin and should be a warning to us. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the Bible uh, shows us just multiple examples of people who've made mistakes so that we won't make the same mistakes. And so I encourage you again to read it. Well, number five, the Bible is a tool against temptation. Uh, you all know the passage in Matthew 4 about where uh, Jesus was tempted. And what I always like to point out is when Jesus was tempted, what did he do? He quoted scripture. He quoted scripture that he had memorized. Long time ago now, when I was a youth minister, I talked to this uh, with the kids, you know, and I'd say, you know what? When Jesus was tempted, he didn't whip a scroll out of his back pocket and say, hold on a minute, devil. Let, let me find this and, you know, go looking for the scripture. No, he had that word hid in his heart. So as soon as he was faced with that temptation, he could give that answer. So he fought temptation with scripture. Uh, and, and, and something else I'll like to share with folks too. Every one of those scriptures that Jesus quoted, they all come from the book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> I don't know how many of us are memorizing verses out of Deuteronomy. But Jesus had them memorized in his heart. And when the temptation came, he was ready. So he fought temptation uh, with scripture. But then number six, the Bible uh, commu communicates knowledge of God. Uh, John 5, uh, beginning verse 39, says, You diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, and yet you refuse to come to me to have life. So Jesus, uh, again, here he's talking to the Pharisees, and you know the Pharisees, you know they were scholarly, at, at least in their knowledge of the Old Testament. And, and Jesus says to them, he says, you know, you study these scriptures because you think just by studying them, you possess eternal life. But he says, these scriptures, they testify about me. All the Bible, all the Old Testament points uh, to the coming of Christ. Uh, the Gospels tell us about the life of Christ. Uh, the epistles, the rest of the New Testament basically look back to the life of Christ. And then the book of Revelation tells us about the coming again of Christ. And so all the Bible gives us uh, knowledge of God. But then number seven, uh, the Bible equips us to be God's servants. Um, the Bible is our basic equipment and training tool, but it's not going to help us if we never use it. Uh, Second uh, Corinthians, uh, excuse me, Second Timothy three, sixteen and seventeen. Listen to what it says: All Scripture is God breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, how does the Bible equip us? Well, I want to take just a minute and look at this passage of Scripture and kind of break it down for us and show you how that the Bible equips us according to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. First, it says all Scripture is God-breathed. Do this for me for just a second. Take a deep breath. Breathe it out. You've just experienced inspiration. Because what the Bible says is all Scripture is God-breathed. It's like it's the breath of God. It comes from the very breath of God. He breathes out and, and He gave us His Scripture. So it's God-breathed and it's, it's profitable, the Bible says. It's profitable for several things. It's profitable uh, for our beliefs, what to believe and what not to believe. And it's profitable for our behavior, what to do and what not to do. And let me break that down and show it to you. First, let's talk about beliefs. 
it's, uh, it says, all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching and rebuking. Teaching is what to believe. Rebuking is what not to believe. So rebuking is basically convicting of sin and, and error. Teaching is, is correct doctrine. So it has to do with our beliefs, what to believe and what not to believe. But also it talks about our behavior, what to do and what not to do. It says correcting, that's what not to do. And training in righteousness, that's what to do. So scripture uh, equips us by showing us what to believe, what not to believe, what to do, what not to do. And then what's the goal? That the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That word thoroughly equipped just means adequate, prepared, mature, complete, and capable. So God's word, here's the conclusion, is the only method by, method by which we can be equipped to be the men and women of God. And God's word is the only message that we have to deliver to people that can lead them to salvation, change their lives, and enable them to grow to maturity as Christians. So that's how the Bible equips us. Now, I know you can't see this probably. Uh, it's one of my favorite cartoons, though. It says... I wish I knew the Bible better. And, and look at that guy. His eyes are all bloodshot from watching TV. I think that's a football game on there. And look at his Bible. It's got cobwebs all over. <laughs> I, I love that cartoon. Now I want to show you something else and, and we'll be done. Look if you can see this. This is a fake Bible that I bought at a home interior store uh, several years ago to use as a sermon illustration. It looks real, but you can see it's hard as a rock. Okay, it won't open, it won't open at all. But here's the illustration. This is the only Bible some people really need because they never open their Bible. They never read it. They never take it and apply it to their lives. Don't be that kind of person, especially if you're a Christian. Make sure that you use your Bible and that your Bible is, is worn out. You know, uh, you, you need to read it every day so that God can use it to make a difference in your life. Hey, thank you for watching today. God bless you.